بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما زلنا مكملين نبان سوسايتي وفاسكا سيرجي جايدلينز فور ذا مانجمنت اوف ديسيندينج ثراسيك اورتا ديزيزز وما زلنا مكملين الاجزاء بتاعة الاكيوت اورتيك سيندروم اند توداي وي ار جوينج تو توك اباوت انتراميورال هيماتوما اند بنتريتينج اورتيك التر اند رابتشرد ديسيندينج ثراسيك اورتيك انيوريزم And as regard the intramural hematoma, it is defined as the presence of blood within the aortic wall without an intimal uh, disruption or an identifiable entry point on uh, imaging. IMH can be a precursor to both the classic aortic dissection and penetrating aortic uh, ulcer and most cases are located in the descending thoracic uh, aorta. One theory actually suggested that IMH is a consequence of rupture of the vasovasorum in the medial layer of the aortic wall, which causes a secondary tear into the aortic lumen. And another theory suggested that IMH results following an intimal entry tear, allowing the blood from the aortic lumen to enter the aortic wall, but then this blood thromboses. within the uh, intimal layer so that no entry tear can be detected on uh, imaging. And modern imaging suggested that the three concepts of IMH, penetrating aortic ulcer and aortic dissection can develop from each other and therefore they are likely to be a variance of the same pathological uh, process which affects the medial uh, wall of the medial layer of the uh, aortic wall. The classification of IMH follows that of Stanford the classification of aortic dissection. So we have a type A IMH involving the ascending aorta and a type B IMH which is localized in the aortic arch and in the descending thoracic aorta. Cross-sectional imaging techniques, either the CT angio or the MRA, are used to differentiate between the three uh, items, either intramural hematoma or penetrating aortic ulcer and aortic dissection, and the characteristic finding of uh, IMH on axial imaging is actually the thickening of the aortic wall of greater than 5 mm in an eccentric or concentric uh, pattern. And to differentiate the IMH from a mural thrombus, this is the difference that mural thrombus has an irregular lumen surface and it narrows the lumen. Discrimination between the IMH and acute dissection with thrombosed false lumen may be difficult and unenhanced CT acquisition is crucial for the diagnosis of IMH. So what will we find in the um, unenhanced CT scan, we will find uh, an, a high attenuation crescentic thickening of the aortic wall extending in a longitudinal non-spiral fashion. And this is pathognomonic for intramural uh, hematoma rather than uh, an aortic dissection with a thrombosed false lumen. So a high attenuation crescentic thickening of the aortic wall extending in a longitudinal rather than spiral fashion. This is pathognomonic for intramural hematoma. The natural history of type B uh, IMH is similar to that of the acute type B aortic dissection. So conservative medical treatment is used for an isolated uncomplicated type B IMH. Treatment with beta blockers has a survival rate of 95% compared with 67% for those treated without beta blockade. IMH is, if associated with penetrating aortic ulcer, it has a significantly worse prognosis. Regression of acute IMH occurs in one third and the progression happens in 20% and up to 40% evolve actually into aortic dissection. Indications for treatment in type B IMH are refractory chest pain, and the evidence of increasing the size of the uh, expanding hematoma, aortic rupture, and progressive pleural uh, effusion. So those are the indications for treatment of IMH. And as we can see from uh, this diagram and from uh, CT scan, the CT scan, we can see the role of the unenhanced CT scan in the diagnosis of the high attenuated crescentic sign in the thickened aortic wall, so this is the IMH. What about the penetrating aortic ulcer? It may result from progressive erosion of atheromatous mural plaque with penetration of the elastic uh, lamina, so it invades into the medial layer of the aortic wall.
Penetrating aortic ulcer may develop in younger patients with an intimal tear, which uh, uh, remain uh, localized. Penetrating aortic ulcer is more often present in the descending thoracic aorta and occur more often in older patients with arterial uh, hypertension, hyperlipoproteinemia, and aortic sclerosis. So there is an atheromatous plaque that will be complicated by a penetrating aortic uh, ulcer after erosion of this uh, atheromatous plaque. Complicated um, penetrating aortic ulcer involves a degeneration towards pseudoaneurysm formation and this happens after disruption of the all layers of the aorta or um, longitudinal or a spiral uh, extension of the uh, blood so it may cause a dissection or a rupture of the uh, aortic uh, wall. Careful imaging is needed to evaluate both the diameter and depth of penetrating aortic uh, ulcer. Although the specific growth rate is unknown, but 20 to 30% of asymptomatic penetrating aortic ulcer show evidence of progression over uh, time. Symptomatic penetrating aortic ulcer have an ominous natural history of progression and unfortunately rupture. Urgent re repair is commonly recommended in uh, this setting, which is the progressive uh, penetrating aortic ulcer or a ruptured penetrating aortic ulcer if the patient is uh, still alive. Progression with pseudoaneurysm formation may occur in 15 to 50% of cases. The association between aortic diameter and rupture risk remains unclear. So, what are the diameters of the penetrating aortic ulcer that may indicate the potentiality for treatment? Patients with penetrating aortic ulcer that initially measures more than 20 mm in diameter or more than 10 mm in depth have a high risk of disease progression and should be considered candidates for early endovascular repair. So this is the indication of repair either these sizes or symptomatic penetrating aortic uh, ulcer. What is the management plan for either patients uh, intramural hematoma or a penetrating aortic ulcer? Patients presenting with uh, uncomplicated type B IMH are primarily treated by medical therapy with beta blockers, as we said, and intensive care uh, monitoring. Endovascular repair is currently indicated in symptomatic or complicated patients or in those with evolution toward an aortic dissection because of higher risk of perioperative uh, morbidity and the risk of rupture as well. Endovascular repair is associated with a lower perioperative morbidity and mortality than uh, open repair. Although the literature provides no compelling uh, guideline for treatment, the working group recommends the treatment of IMH should follow the similar guidelines as those for treatment of aortic uh, dissection, especially if associated with an evolving penetrating aortic ulcer. So if we have a patient with an IMH and penetrating aortic ulcer, you should consider him for uh, treatment. Expansion of the IMH, intimal tear disruption, or bury uh, aortic hematoma or progression to aortic dissection. Indications and the choice of treatment of penetrating aortic ulcer are similar to the IMH with respect to the sizes, as we said before, if the diameter is more than uh, 20 mm uh, and the depth of more than 10 mm. According to the largest published series, specific aortic diameter and neck length and depth of the penetrating aortic ulcer were not required for uh, endovascular uh, repair, but as we said, presence of these diameters is actually an, an indicator for uh, rapid progression of uh, this ulcer. In the absence of a randomized control trial, the level of evidence for treatment of penetrating aortic ulcer is low, there is currently no evidence-based treatment recommendation available to support treatment of uh, asymptomatic penetrating aortic ulcer beyond blood pressure control. So it is medical in both of them if the size is small and endovascular repair if they are symptomatic or uh, complicated. And this is the diagram shows how the penetrating aortic ulcer uh, presents. So it is an 
ulcerated atheromatous plaque that penetrates into the uh, aortic wall and as we can see here in the imaging it is the aortic wall which is penetrated and there is uh, an intimal uh, disruption and the contrast within the uh, intimal layer of the uh, within the medial layer of the uh, aorta with preserved outer aortic wall to differentiate it from the uh, aortic pseudo aneurysm so what about the recommendations about the IMH and the penetrating aortic ulcer? If there is an uncomplicated type B intramural hematoma and penetrating aortic ulcer, they should be treated medically and followed by serial imaging surveillance. Endovascular repair should be considered for complicated type B intramural hematoma and endovascular repair also should be considered for complicated type B penetrating aortic ulcer. And in the guidelines, they defined the complicated IMH by absence or presence of recurrent pain, expansion of the IMH, very aortic hematoma, and intimal disruption and progression into aortic dissection. And complicated penetrating aortic ulcer means also presence of recurrent pain or a penetrating aortic ulcer that initially measures more than 20 mm in diameter or more than 10 mm in depth or progression to total aortic uh, diameter or progression of the total aortic diameter over the serial surveillance scans. What about the other component of the uh, acute aortic syndrome, which is ruptured aneurysm of the descending uh, thoracic uh, aorta? Uh, most thoracic uh, aortic aneurysms I, are either located in the ascending aorta or the descending thoracic aorta, but either type can extend into the aortic arch. Rupture risk correlates with the aneurysm diameter and aortic rupture is defined as disruption of all layers, all layers of the aortic wall, intima, media, adventitia, and in active phase, active extravasation of blood detected by the contrast enhanced CTA, MRA, as extravasation of the contrast uh, along or through the whole uh, arterial wall is actually pathognomonic for rupture. Generally, the descending thoracic aortic aneurysm rupture is contained by the very uh, aortic structure as the pleura, pericardium, or the intrathoracic organs as the esophagus, lungs, and heart. What about the management? Rupture of the descending thoracic aortic aneurysm is an acute condition resulting in a high uh, mortality as expected. Most patients die even before receiving treatment or do not survive the treatment. Survivors are at risk of multi-system organ and or cerebral and or spinal insult as well. Traditionally, descending thoracic aortic aneurysm rupture has been treated by open repair, but in the last few decades, endovascular repair has emerged as an alternative option in selected patients which um, meet the criteria for using an endovascular uh, device. Symptomatic and ruptured descending thoracic aortic aneurysms should be treated urgently because of the risk of imminent exsanguination and death. Open repair, traditionally ruptured descending thoracic aortic aneurysm has been managed by open repair and a recent meta-analysis of uh, 200 patients with ruptured descending thoracic aortic aneurysm demonstrated a high 30-day mortality of 33% treated with uh, open repair and major complications uh, include myocardial infarction, stroke and uh, paraplegia as well. And another recent multicenter retrospective review of 69 uh, patients with ruptured descending thoracic aortic aneurysm, they found that the composite outcome of death stroke or permanent paraplegia is actually 36.2%. Uh, so open repair for a ruptured descending thoracic aortic aneurysm is associated with a high mortality and uh, morbidity. So what about the endovascular repair? TVAR has emerged as a less invasive therapeutic option for the management of the ruptured uh, descending thoracic aortic uh, aneurysm, but um, unfortunately there is no a prospective randomized study has compared the stent grafting versus the uh, open repair. However, the results of meta-analysis and multi-center studies suggest a lower mortality and complication rates following TVAR.
And in a recent meta-analysis comparing the endovascular repair and the open repair for ruptured descending thoracic aortic aneurysm, they found the 30-day mortality was 19% in the endovascular group in comparison to 33% in the open repair group. The need for the left subclavian artery revascularization in a challenging proximal aortic neck anatomy is controversial, especially in uh, acute cases. And in cases in which the left subclavian artery is to be covered, prior revascularization in the emergency setting is recommended in patients with a left internal mammary artery to the coronary artery bypass or in those with uh, a clearly dominant left uh, vertebral uh, artery. And in cases of a challenging distal aortic anatomy, actually the celiac artery can be selectively uh, covered. So what about the mesenteric ischemia? Will it happen if we cover the celiac artery? And geography of the superior mesenteric artery after balloon occlusion of the celiac artery can visualize the adequate collateral circulation between the mesenteric vessels. However, even with proven collateralization, ischemic complication can occur following the celiac artery coverage. Endovascular parallel or periscope endograft techniques can potentially be used to maintain the perfusion through the celiac artery. So this is how to manage the proximal landing zone while we need to cover the left subclavian artery. So in the emergency setting, you can cover the left subclavian artery except in the cases of a dominant left vertebral artery or an internal mammary to coronary uh, artery bypass. You have to do uh, an emergency revascularization first before the coverage and as regards the celiac artery you can either selectively uh, cover the uh, celiac artery after evaluation of the collateral circulation but this is uh, not 100 um, percent um, preventive for prevention of uh, mesenteric ischemia and either to do an endovascular parallel or a periscope endograft technique Physician modified fenestrated endografts has also been used to maintain perfusion to the celiac artery and the development of an off-shelf fenestrated graft may provide a new options to treat acute uh, descending thoracic aorta pathology involving the visceral uh, branches. So uh, this is the diagram about the thoracic uh, aorta and this is the axial cuts sh showing a huge uh, aneurysm just distal to the uh, left subclavian uh, artery. So what about the recommendations? In patients with ruptured descending thoracic aortic aneurysm, endovascular repair should be the first treatment option when the anatomy is appropriate. And in emergency ruptured descending thoracic aortic aneurysm, in patients with patent left uh, mammary to coronary bypass or with a dominant or single left vertebral artery, a left subclavian artery revascularization should be performed prior to the left subclavian artery coverage.